I hate saying foundation because people are like, I'm not a beginner. <laughs> Elbow to the face. When you go to a class and all you're doing is shooting drills and just pressing rounds down range and you're not understanding why you're doing that, I feel like you're wasting your time and your money. Can I say bad words? If I couple that grip with good vision and a, like an understanding of what my trigger can do, then people get sorry when they shoot against me. That's what you want for your friends. Make everybody sad. I have a class called Pistol Dominance because you need to be dominant. You need to be that much better than everybody else because you've practiced your craft. Since I've been focused more on rifle shooting and developing that skill, some of you have complained that there isn't enough pistol shooting on the channel anymore. Well, today we have a special episode with Fabio Spinella of My Own Defender. He is also a shooter for Team Beretta. So excited to have this. Now this does come from our last Average Joe's range day. And we didn't get to put out a video from that range day just because there was so much going on that I couldn't cover all of the instructors but I was able to get this block of instruction and I do think that you guys will get a lot out of this. There's a lot of information in his two hour block is which, which what he had, but it's also not all that he has to offer. So if you like what you see and you're interested in taking a class him, I will leave a link down in the description. Also check him out on Instagram and I'll leave a link for his YouTube channel at the end as well. First, cause it's really the foundation. Um, I hate saying foundation cause people are like, I'm not a beginner. <laughs> Elbow to the face. <laughs> uh, basic shooters want to do intermediate stuff. Intermediate shooters want to do advanced stuff. Advanced shooters want to do basic stuff. So I call it get shooting, grip, eyes, and trigger. If you get grip, eyes, and trigger figured out, you're going to be pretty good. How advanced you can apply that information, what kind of problems you can solve with understanding grip, eyes, and trigger is going to define you as a shooter. When you go to a class and all you're doing is shooting drills and just pressing rounds down range and you're not understanding why you're doing that, I feel like you're wasting your time and your money. But you got to be paying attention when the gun's going off. What am I doing? Is the grip changing? Is my vision changing? Is my trigger finger knew what it's supposed to be doing? So as, as far as grip and the foundations of the grip. Finally in 2023, we all can agree that we need to be high on the back strap of the gun. Fantastic. There was actually a time when people had other beliefs about that also. People break the internet about stupid stuff all the time. 9 millimeter versus 45. That's the voice that the people make fun of, by the way. Everybody sounds the same. Um, it, finally, we all agree. So what is high? Like people would say, okay, man, that's pretty high. I don't see a gap between your hand and the beaver tail of the gun. Cool. This is my version of high. When I start getting a fold on the skin right there, and everybody can do that. You will see it less if you have a beaver tail gun. If you've got a CZ, a Beretta, or something like that, stick out a bunch 2011, you're not going to see it as much, but you can definitely feel it when you're doing it right. I've got a little bit of a skin fold. So not only do I feel like I'm in the right place, I also have a visual representation of doing it correctly. That's important to me because I dry fire a bunch. Anybody dry fire? Okay, not even, that's everybody, right? That's lies. So if this is you dry, if this is you dry firing, I'm sorry to break it to you, you don't dry fire. That is not dry fire. That may be your first week of dry fire. You have a very low understanding of dry fire. It's not your fault, somebody told you that that was important. That's a big waste of time, stop doing that. You know how much time I press the trigger when I dry fire? I don't know, maybe 20% of the time. The rest of the time, I'm working on stuff that actually matters and transfers to live fire. So one of the things is, when I come out of my draw and I do my presentation, I am looking for that fold. That's one of the things I'm looking at. I'm also looking for the front fingers to be pressing front to back towards the back strap of the gun. So I am pressing this way. I am not monkey gripping the gun. How many people try to squeeze the gun this way? You may not know if you've never paid attention or if you've never been that detailed about your understanding of your craft, you may not know that you're doing this. You're actually doing this when you press the gun. When you press the gun with your dominant hand like this, what happens to your shot? Yeah, the, the, the low left problem that a lot of right-handed shooter goes, and they go, that's anticipation. It's like, no, it's not. You don't understand what you're talking about. In fact, if your instructor is always saying that you have anticipation, they don't know how to teach you better. They need to give you more information than that. Not everybody's scared of the gun going off. You know you're pressing the go button, the gun will go off. We get some anxiety about that, even if you get more advanced. But the problem isn't that you have anticipation. The problem is that you're not pressing, you're not holding the gun correctly. Does that make sense? So for you today, if you're paying attention, you're start, going to start moving forward and up in this, in this craft. All right. When you take this home, by the way, if you want to have your phone out and take notes, I encourage that. Write about it, read about it, think about it, talk about it. All the stuff that you can do about it is going to get you learning it sooner. By the way, I'm talking super fast because I only got two hours. <laughs> so high with a fold, front to back pressure, not side pressure. Watch the muzzle of the gun. If I squeeze the gun like a, watch the muzzle of the gun. If I squeeze the gun like a monkey, watch what happens to the gun. You see that? 
If I hold it straight front to back and I press the trigger, nothing happens to the gun. If I squeeze it like a monkey, you see that? So once I set the pressure front to back, I am literally pressing. And how much pressure? I don't know. Like, I was like hey, sir, good to meet you. Good to meet. It's a nice, like, I want the job, but not, can I say bad words? <laughs> but not, I'm an and I'm going to crush your hand. Mm -hmm. That's the guy that's trying to date my daughter. He gets the left hand. Can I shake your hand? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? You want to date my daughter? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, she's eight. I mean, you would be a creep and I would <laughs> you. So the left hand is where all the like pressure comes. People go, how much pressure? All the pressure. All the pressures you can put on it. But the gun shakes. If the gun is shaking, I'm just, I'm going to demystify all this crap. If your gun is shaking, it's because you have too much tension in your dominant hand. I can literally put all of the pressure that I possibly want on the support side. The gun will not shake. It will actually move very little. That's when people look like with their gun is flat or whatever. I could care less about that. It just looks like it's not moving a bunch. Cause look at my look at my nails right there. See how white they are? I am squeezing the blood out of them, and I don't even have a gun in my hand. That's dry fire. I pick up my gun even without my gun in my hand. This is legitimate dry. Fire. You do this for a few, few few minutes a day. Look to a target. Look to a target. Look to a target. Move the gun there and crush in here. Now you're working, now you're getting smoked in your forearm, your hand's starting to learn how to hold the gun. Many people have a dry fire grip and they have a live fire grip. If you show up to the live fire range and you try shooting and it's not working as good as you thought it was going to work, your times are not as good, your hits are not as good as your dry fire, it's because you're not doing it right. If it transfers immediately, you're like, I'm doing good work at home. 10, 15 minutes a day will get you a long way. So, front to back, really high where you can feel that in the back and then this, as far as where does the left hand go, okay? For me, the left hand is gonna go under the trigger guard and my index finger is going to be interacting with the middle finger of my dominant hand. So I'm not just going somewhere on there where I can't feel it, don't know where it is. I'm shooting for index finger to middle finger of my dominant hand. It goes right in that pocket there. And I have these gnarly calluses because I go to the same spot every time. Front to back, right there. And then I crush the gun. There, ha there have been people that have trademarked every presentation and every grip on the planet. Man, I don't have a name for it. Just once you get to it, close the back of the gun and crush the gun. What do you mean by close the back of the gun? My palms need to be pulling together. They need to be closing in the back. If you have this going on, no bueno. If you have this going on, because you're like super tactical and you have your elbow up and you have a big old gap in the back, you may look cool on Instagram, but your shots are going to be sorry. You with me? Index the middle finger. Uh, Seek lender calls it the nutcracker in the back. If nutcracker helps you in the back, then that's what you're looking for. If you remember that, there's a lot of other variables. The length of your fingers, the, the thickness of your grip, um, your muscle structure, how big you are. Like there's gonna be things that are, that can move where your thumbs go. Some people are like, thumbs up only, thumbs forward only, thumbs down only. It's not only, it's you and your equipment that is gonna have to dial in. If you're paying attention, you can sort this stuff out pretty quick. Does that make sense? So how do you practice the grip thing? Like how do you make this work? You start with just simple groups. You guys ever shoot groups? You know what I'm talking about? And I'll say to you, hey man, like groups are like no time involved, as accurate as you can give me shots. Uh-huh, and then if I put you on the line without doing the demo, what are you gonna do? Milk the gun about 17 minutes? <laughs> get your like, whatever stance, like some crazy stuff is gonna start happening. Just get the stance that you want. I'm not even gonna talk about stance today at all. Crush the gun the way I'm telling you and just press the trigger as good as you can press the trigger without any time pressure. Some of you guys will go, great, whack, 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 whack. That's practical accuracy, we're gonna do that next. And then after that, we're gonna get into doubles, which is gonna really drive your vision and how we connect the whole, like uh, managing the gun with your eyes, which makes people blow their mind. All right, so the first one, back up a little bit. I'm gonna demo on this. I'm gonna do just a group, five, six, seven shots. I'm gonna try to put them as close as possible. I'm not gonna take forever. I'm also not gonna rush through it. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna point to that top black square. I'm gonna hold the gun the way I want to. And I'm gonna press to the rear. If I said, hey man, like, just shoot me the nicest, tightest little group you can. Now you'd be like, oh man, like, they're all touching. Yeah, 
if you're holding the gun, like I'm telling you to hold the gun, the gun isn't really moving a whole bunch while you're pressing the trigger. Now, what about recoil management? When does recoil management matter? When time is involved. If you just said, hey man, I just want your accuracy and your gun went boom. And it was perfect every time. Dude, I could give, I could give a rip how high your gun goes. Now, if it's moving inside your hands while you're pressing the trigger, that's the problem. That's why you can't guarantee shots. It's not a recoil management problem. We gotta separate the two. Recoil management is based on your eyes. Like your gun going back to the same spot is based on your eyes. Grip is going to make it so the gun doesn't swivel inside your hands. If your gun does this inside your hands where like your, your trigger guard leaves your, your finger, you have a massive grip problem. In fact, I'm gonna have the guys look around. Like if you're shooting like this and the gun leaves and swivels your, your fingers like that, if you see a gap, if you have a training partner, if you have a video camera, whatever the heck, and you're noticing that, you have a grip problem. High on the back, front to back pressure, index to middle finger, and crush the, the gun on the left side. There is no gap left. Yes, there's no gap left. If I do that, I can almost be in the way I press the trigger and still I'm gonna get that. If I couple that grip with good vision and a, like an understanding of what my trigger can do, then people get sorry when they shoot against me. That's what you want for your friends. Make everybody sad. I have a class called pistol dominance because you need to be dominant. You need to be that much better than everybody else because you've practiced your craft. Whenever you have good side picture and a great grip, remember the grip I just taught you. On you, go. Ooh. This is actually quite, quite good. It's a little bit of input. From, remember the monkey grip that I'm talking about? That's what's happening. You're milking the gun. I guarantee it. Because they're all kind of like stringing down like in that vertical thing. Now, I know that I don't have a pressure problem because the gun isn't moving left and right between shots. It's, it's just stringing up and down, which means that you're adding pressure with your other fingers as you're pressing the trigger. So you're going press, 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 press. And when it gets really heavy at the final wall, you're adding pressure with your fingers, which makes the gun dip just a hair. At five yards, no big deal. 10 yards, it starts to matter. At 25 yards, you're gonna miss. Then we put that on the move and it becomes a real problem. So that's why we assess it up close and we kind of learn from that and move on. Um, so like sometimes when I see like one out like this, I usually think, well, is this a double action, single action person? Sometimes that could be the thing. Or it could be the first the first trigger pull of the day. You're just kind of like, oh, I wasn't ready for that. that well, either one. So what I'm saying to you when you're assessing this kind of thing, don't pay attention to that guy. Because then what do you do for the rest of the drill? I suck, I suck, I suck. What's wrong with me? I suck, I suck. How does that help you get closer to your goal? If this was your five-year-old you were talking to, you'd be like, bro, you suck. What's the matter? No, you don't talk to them like that. Why do you talk to yourself that way? If you want to be successful, that needs to go away. So if you have a problem, cool, man. Like, put it aside. What do I need to do the next time? Grip, front to back, crush. Right? Like, remember, say the thing that moves you closer to your goal. Say that to yourself. The solution, not the problem. This is a left-hand problem, in my opinion. Who is this? In my opinion, like your, your grip pressure on the left is changing ever so slightly throughout the shooting sequence. So if it's like, I'm going to make numbers up. 100 pounds, 95 pounds, 102 pounds, 40 pounds, whatever. And the gun is going to start moving left and right. Okay, so left hand needs to be consistent. Once it's set, it cannot move. The only thing that changes is this guy. Yeah? Similar problems. This is quite good. Who's this? Oh man, nice. Seat belt. Who's this? Uh, this is super normal. That, like we started shooting like practical accuracy. Your shots, if we don't fix it with with that grip, your shots are going to string like a seat belt. Super normal. Depending on your left hand pressure, they'll either like more pressure, and then you'd like jump the gun down, or you like go. Oh, I have to be really accurate, so you release the tension and it goes up and it moves in that seat belt direction like this. It's super normal. When we do practical accuracy, if we don't fix the left hand pressure, the way you hold the gun, you're gonna see even more, and the doubles are gonna be like very extreme that way. So let's focus on the support hand crushing the gun really, really good. This is super normal, guys. If you teach, you're gonna see a lot of seat belts. And then if they're left-handed shooters, they're gonna seat belts gonna go this way. Mm -hmm. Is that the same that you're doing? No. Okay, so add a little bit more if you can. 
Now, instead of slamming all the way through the trigger, I want you to touch the trigger and just add some amount of pressure until it breaks. Mm -hmm. Is this lined up? Are you covering the black square completely? Yeah. Cover and then add a little pressure. Go ahead. You want me to fire? Yeah, yeah, just add a little pressure. Just listen to the words coming out. Add a little pressure, add a little pressure, add a little pressure, more pressure. Okay, that's a little high. Yeah. This needs to be covering the black square mm -hmm. completely. Yeah, because it's in the middle of the notch. Okay. One more time. Just add a, see all the tension right here that's shaking? Yeah. Relax that. This is the one that's tight. This Press to the rear, press to the rear, press to the rear, press to the rear. Yeah, much, much better. Go ahead and holster. So now we cut the distance from the first shot to the next shot to, to less than half, and you're, you're always like at the edge of the square. That's good with me. So what was the difference there? Uh, just just the pressure and closing. The the pressure. Uh, yeah. So guys, the, the fix is the pressure needs to be on the correct side. I'm not saying you need to shoot relaxed, but how many few times do you hear that? Hey, man, just relax. Okay. <laughs> like when you're using the wrong words, you're not helping anybody. On my support side, there's nothing relaxed. If I shot for 15 minutes straight, I need a break in an ice bath. Thankfully, when I do like a, a match or a stage, it's 15 seconds at a time. 15 seconds at a time. Imagine if I had to do it for two minutes straight. So this is nothing, nothing relaxed. This ought to be effortless. In other words, if I hold the gun with just my dominant side, it shouldn't shake. It, so I get to that point of shaking and then take it back a little bit. If I add pressure to the support side, then it won't shake. For you, we got to your to your hand holding the gun and you're like, Grrr. I'm like, hey, relax this side and, and chill out. And this one is gonna be all the tension. And then all of a sudden we went from first shot to second shot. We worked for another five minutes and you're gonna start stacking holes in there. This is probably like, ah, screw it. I can't do it. So I'm just gonna go for it. And it's not a conscious choice. As an iron sight shooter, I do this once, two, two three times. I'm like, Pfft. Mental dexterity goes away. I don't really care that much. I can't really do it. I'm just going to press the trigger and hope that it goes well. So if I eliminate those, all right, cool. So this is, this is makes sense. This makes sense to me. How do I fix that closer and closer and closer? Dominant side, effortless, support side, all the pressure. And again, if you can't guarantee a one or two inch group shooting, you probably ought to be focused on that for a while before you do anything else. Stop doing the one reload once, like please, for the for the love. I know JJ just released that thing, and everybody's like, "What pow? What pow? What pow? What pow?" It's like your grip sucks. Probably should work on that first. Yeah. So that's your first step on learning that. If you can do like that, oh, that's mine. Shoot. Uh, <laughs> if you can do that or that, cool, man. Like, let's go to practical accuracy. Now we're adding some sort of visual element to it. We're trying to figure out, hey. Can I shoot that almost like a sequence? I'm paying attention to how the gun goes off and I'm shooting it again and I'm shooting it again and I'm shooting it again. I am not waiting for the gun to stop completely. Cause on these, what did you do? The gun went off, who cares? Reline everything, stop everything, shoot again, right? That, that's the group shooting. Now, practical accuracy, let me show you. So I'm going to look to that spot right there. I'm gonna apply the same grip. The gun's gonna go up, it's gonna come back down. I am not going to stop shooting. I'm not going to stop the gun. I am going to start opening up the group a little bit and keep really focused on that spot over there. So the gun is going to continue bouncing, almost like a karaoke like ball on, a, on the words. This is what we're talking about. Uh, so, eyes and ears. There we go. Dead serious? Screw you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, now you're looking at that, you're like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're shooting groups at pace? Right. What's different from my first set? To the second set, I had one shot fly to the right. Take a guess. What's different? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, nothing changed. You know what I added though? I added very specific focus with my eyes on the spot, no matter what my sights were doing. So I added the grip was exactly the same. I changed nothing. But instead of allowing myself to get distracted from anything, I tried to keep my eyes really focused. Is it easy? No. You see that one flyer to the right? That's me making a mistake. That's me going, just getting a hair of distraction from the dot lifting, and I look at it for a hair of a second, and by the time the shot presses, it prints high, and I'm like, why did I do that? And then what did I do to solve that? Back to visual focus on the spot, and watch the, the round stack in the middle of the freaking square. Bah, 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 bah. Probably, oh, I didn't give myself a timer. Probably 25s, 30s maybe. I mean, 
If you can do that, you should you should start mat doing matches like today. Like, let's go compete. Because if you can do that at distance, that's what the game is most of the time. People are like, I want to do 12 splits. For what? When was the last time you watched the World Championship do 12 splits on a stage? We can do it. I'll show you in a little bit, but that doesn't matter to this, right? Does that make sense to everybody? So you're going to apply the same fundamental skill I gave you with the grip the way I wanted it, but your vision is going to have to be way, 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 way more picky. If you're not picky, what's going to happen is you're going to start trying to line up sights every single time. Line up sights is going to create like, oh, the sights are good now. Sights are good now. And you're going to start seeing all that crap printing on the paper. And what are you going to do? It meant that like mental capacity of like staying focused is gonna be like nah this is not going well i'm gonna get disengaged it's like some of the iron shooters especially you're gonna get disengaged real fast don't do that uh some of the best iron shooters on the planet shoot it just like a dot they look to a spot they keep the eyes on the spot regardless of what this what this is going on here and they line it up to the best of their ability for something like this you're looking for the front post to be in the middle of the thing but it doesn't have to be perfect so if you're an iron sight shooter, you're not looking for perfection as the gun is coming back, whack, 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 whack. Anytime that's in the middle and over that black square you're looking at, that's when you finish your presses. I don't have time in two hours to give you my workshop on trigger press. It's probably an hour and a half works by itself. But if you're, press, you're trigger pressing like this, it's probably not gonna go very well. The travel is the importance, not the weight. Man, I'm talking about some deep stuff right now. How much you travel from front to back will in, will affect your shot. So if I'm going from here, people talk about, I only slap the trigger. Those are the people I make fun of, right? The voice is a little different because some slappers are good, right? People do this when they press the trigger. I know world champions that do this. What happens between here and here? Say nothing. Nothing until I start applying pressure on the trigger, then I may be doing some kind of trigger press. And then when does it really matter? Right there. I know that there's no other no other movement. That is the final wall. And if I add pressure, it will break. So why would I not just go there? You see my finger moving? I, gu I guarantee you it can't. But it's breaking every time. I'm not trapping the trigger. So that's like a two minute version of travel matters. Because if I have a long way to travel, I can induce stupidity to the muzzle, right? If I have this much room to travel, the gun can't move in the travel time. If I have very little room to travel, I have a better chance of not doing stupid in the middle. Because we tend to do stupid sometimes. Also, what happens when you travel less? It's faster. Because I'm traveling less. If I got to go here to the car, or I'm already at the car, who's going to get there first? The guy that's already at the car, so I want to already be at the car. You with me? So when you do this, try not to do this like whack, whack, whack. Whack, you don't need to. Maybe on the first one, okay, because you're going from outside to inside. But once you're connected to the shoe, stay connected to the shoe. That's my like two seconds of trigger. It literally is about an hour and a half worth of workshop. Some other day. Make sense? So when you get to this, the important parts are the grip I taught you and visual focus on a very small spot. Like try to pick a hole. If you have a hole in there, try to pick a hole inside the block and stare at that no matter what's happening to your sights. You with me? more time are you looking about the square uh, no. Yeah, no i don't even know where you were where are you yeah. looking right in the middle right in the middle okay yeah. put it above the duty above okay so you 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 again that was fabio spinella my own defender thank you to to fabio for coming out and being a part of averages range day thank you to him for sharing his knowledge again if you are interested in taking a class with him if you're interested in learning more about some of the things he talked about go follow him on instagram check out his youtube channel sign up for a class if you're in the dfw area fabio now lives here in the dfw area he teaches a lot out at mission 160 so check out some of the classes he's got going on there um and he's got some across the country as well. So if you're somewhere else in the U.S. and you want to shoot with him or if you want to host him, hit him up on Instagram. Make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe. Karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And I will see you guys in the next one.